Hello everybody, um, so I'm back from foraging and I've got the wild garlic here. Um, it's very important when you get back to wash your wild garlic. Um, obviously it's grown out in the wild, there's lots of animals and people around, it's quite important that you wash the environment off of it. So what I tend to do, this is already washed by the way, but what I tend to do is I pick it at the base between the stalk and the leaf. And what this does is it makes sure that when you blitz it, you don't get any lumps of stalk in there that might give it a weird texture. So very important to, uh, to prep your wild garlic. Now, obviously this wild garlic has a lot of the flowers as well. And these flowers are beautiful on things like salads or on dishes. You don't want to put these through. So we set these to one side and make sure that you keep them in the fridge. You can actually wrap them in, in a bit of uh, kitchen roll or perhaps a J cloth, dampen it up, cling film it, and that will sit happily in the fridge for a couple of weeks um, or whenever you need to use them. Obviously, you have a look at them every now and again. They might need to, to be uh, refreshed. So, picking this garlic, I'll just talk through some of the ingredients I've got as well. I've got some fantastic um, toasted hazelnuts. Now, there's different ways you can toast your hazelnuts. You could do them under the grill, you could do them in a pan. I prefer to do them in the oven. Um, the reason for that is I think that when they're roasted in the oven, they give, them, they give off a fantastic um, sweetness, which I think if you do them under the grill, sometimes you get bits of burnt um, parts on them and... Uh, it's not quite, you know, it gives you a little bit of bitterness. So that's enough garlic for me. I've got some cheese, which we're gonna add in at the end. I've also got some cold pressed rapeseed oil, Cornish sea salt, we've got some black pepper and a bit of lemon juice. So first of all, we need to blanch this garlic. So we're gonna go over to the, the uh, hob and I'll show you how to blanch and refresh. So we've got our pan of boiling water on, we're going to add in some salt, season the water, very important to season your water, especially when you're cooking vegetables. And the idea is that we're going to set the chlorophyll within this, this leaf. So basically by doing this, we keep that fantastic green colour to the um, pesto. If we didn't do this, it would end up brown, it would go, it would go brown. So we'll set the chlorophyll by plunging this in here, count to about six seconds. And that comes out and next to us ready we have a pot of cold water and what we're doing here is we're just setting the chlorophyll so while that's there we're going to uh, grab our beaker for our um, for our processor you can use a food processor you can use a smoothie maker anything really that's going to give you a nice blend and that's going to go straight into the beaker and then we'll walk over to the board and I'll show you what else needs to go in. So into this now we put our toasted hazelnuts. You don't want too much but you want enough. I mean I like I like it quite nutty. I think it's um it's a great it's a great mix of garlic and sweetness. I'm going to add in our glue. So this is um cold pressed rapes at all and this is going to basically blend it all together if you don't have enough of this in here it won't work so we add in a good amount of that a pinch of cornish sea salt and good squeeze of lemon juice right over to the blender so Straight on, we're going to pulse this, we're not going to blend it, just going to give it a good old... <laughs> I reckon that should do. And then back over to our bowl and we'll finish off the rest of the process. So, straight to the bowl. We're gonna add in our cheese. So you can, I quite like to use uh, Old Winchester or Lyburn um, or any sort of cheese, that, British cheese that you'd put on pasta really. You could use Hardy's from Book and Bucket or yeah, anything like that. I mean, something that's strong, something that's a nice sort of replacement for Parmesan. 
Also, when, when you put the cheese in, I quite like to use a microplane. The microplane helps to thicken the uh, pesto as well. So if we give that a good old mix, we're gonna add some black pepper and taste it. Use a touch more salt. And there we go, we're good to go. So this is uh, my wild garlic pesto. This recipe can be found in the pig cookbook, which you can buy from our website. And it's a great supplement this time of year for pesto. You put it on hot pasta, put it on top of salads and quiches, it's fantastic. So I hope you enjoy making it and um, thank you very much for watching me.